It gives me a great pleasure to welcome to the conference Mr. Todd Stern of the U.S. Department of State of the United States of America. Your Excellency, you have three minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Can we, can we listen to the speech? Nobody is listening to you. Mr. Mr. Sen, this clapping is for you. So, Mr. Sen, you have a very nice welcome now. So you can start. I'm delighted that I have such an enthusiastic crowd. This is great. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I am honored to be here representing the United States and to support the President of the COP and the Government of South Africa in pursuit of a successful, balanced outcome here in Durban. I also want to thank the South African Presidency for the enormous amount of work it has invested in this process over the past year and to thank you in advance for the critical role you will have to play over the next two days to help countries resolve the remaining open issues and secure a strong and credible outcome that builds on what we all agreed to just last year in Cancun. There is, of course, important and difficult work remaining on both tracks of the Bali Roadmap. On the LCA side, the Cancun agreements were a major undertaking involving all parties that included a set of balanced international decisions. We agreed to set up a green climate fund, a clean technology center and network, and an adaptation committee, and to write the guidelines for a new regime of international transparency applying to all countries. These institutions should guide the international climate action for a long time to come. So a critical part of Durban is to do the work necessary to start bringing these new arrangements to life. And just as, as we have done over the past two years, we must move on all these issues together as a balanced package, and indeed that is the only basis on which they can move forward. At home, the United States takes seriously the commitments first made by our leaders in Copenhagen and reaffirmed in Cancun. We are making progress toward our target of reducing emissions in the range of 17 percent below 2005 levels by 2020 through an array of domestic efforts, including robust new national fuel economy standards that will nearly double our automobile fleet efficiency by 2025 as well as the more than $90 billion of investments that we have made in clean energy since the President was elected. The New York Times recently quoted a, a well-known U.S. environmental leader saying that, that President Obama's recent decision to, to boost fuel economy to over 54 miles per gallon, quote, is the biggest single step that any nation has taken to cut global warming pollution, close quote. The President has also proposed a new clean energy standard in which 85 percent of our electricity would come from clean sources by 2035. At the same time, we have been providing important new international climate assistance. Our Fast Start contribution for the first two years of Fast Start 2010 and 11 amounts to some $5.1 billion comprise of approximately $3.4 billion of congressional appropriations and substantial development finance. We are also hard at work on developing 
the policies and mechanisms needed to mobilize combined public and private capital toward the donor goal of mobilizing $100 billion a year by 2020. We also know, of course, that a central part of the discussion here in Durban has revolved around the linked issues of a second commitment period for the Kyoto Protocol and the shape of a strong, credible, and comprehensive climate architecture for the future. These are tough issues, but the United States is deeply engaged in dealing with them and is committed to finding a workable solution. As we embark on the final hours of negotiations, I want to urge all countries to seek common ground to deliver a pragmatic and successful outcome that paves the way for robust action now and in the years to come. Thank you very, very much. I would like to thank Mr. Todd Stern for his statement and keeping on time. Now it gives me a great